Uh, I'm Sarah Linda Lickbaugh, Director of Education at the Hudson River Museum, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Artist Insights with Librata Romero. The Hudson carries me away. Thank you all for joining us today in this virtual workshop with artist Lee Romero, in which you, the participants, will paint a view, either from your home or from your imagination, that inspires you to travel. Romero will show a video uh, of himself painting en plein air or outside in Riverdale Park, looking toward the Hudson River and the Palisades. Uh, this scene inspires many of his works in his exhibition, From the Desert to the River, which complements our uh, Hudson River Museum exhibit, Landscape Art and Virtual Travel that hangs nearby. We shall then join him on the balcony of his ninth floor studio for a demonstration of how he designs and paints these compelling views. You are invited to paint along with him using materials such as paper, poster board, or canvas, watercolor, tempera, or acrylic, or what you may have it at hand, brushes and water, and ask questions, uh, please, by typing them in the chat. So do note that your microphones are muted, but you are in control of your video camera. Uh, also, if you'll see from the icon at the bottom, closed captioning is available courtesy of Zoom. I want to thank our supporters for this program and the exhibition Landscape Art and Virtual Travel uh, that is on view at the Hudson River Museum through August 8th, provided by Art Bridges. Also, big thanks to Connor Romero for his masterful videos. And I want to note that From the Desert to the River, Lee Romero's exhibition will remain on view through June 27th. Now a little bit about Lee. He was born in Los Angeles in 1942 and has been drawing and painting since childhood, exhibiting both photography and paintings in Europe, Mexico, and throughout the United States. In 1965, after art school in San Francisco, he enlisted in the US Army, and while stationed in West Germany, he was assigned as the regimental photographer. This marked the beginning of his 50-year career in photojournalism. Upon returning stateside, he was hired as a staff photographer for the Providence Journal. Two years later, in 1969, he joined the staff of the New York Times, but resigned four years later to pursue magazine work. He worked for the New York Times Sunday Magazine, Newsweek, and Time Magazines, and others. And then in 1976, he was offered an opportunity to work as a consultant to El Sol de Mexico newspaper in Mexico City, which he accepted and then decided to try his hand at painting full time and return to his home state of California, where he opened and operated an art gallery in Venice, California, that is. The gallery failed, but he took a summer job with the Los Angeles Times and then settled into a staff position at the San Francisco Examiner, where he remained for the next six years. In 1985, he returned to New York and was rehired at the New York Times, where he worked until his retirement in 2013. Wow, what a resume. 19, in 2002, he was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for breaking news as a staff member of the New York Times series on race in America. He is presently spending his retirement painting full time in his Yonkers studio which leads him to today. We always love working with Lee Romero, who's been a partner and supporter of the HRM for so many years, collaborating in programs for audiences, including students, families, and his fellow artists. We are so pleased to be able to spend time with him today, enjoying his company, which is matchless, along with a rare view into his practice. Thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us, Lee. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, very excited to be here. <laughs> uh, am I on? Is, am I? Am I to? Uh, I guess I am. You uh, are on. on. You're <laughs> on. It is your show, Lee. Well, this Take is nice. Away. I'm looking at a, a painting <laughs> of, of, uh, of uh, uh, backyards we used to play in. Uh, 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 that, that's my hometown of Calexico. Uh, I checked into a motel one day on a, a visit about 10 years ago. The motel didn't exist when we were kids. And uh, so um, I looked out the window and there was our neighborhood. I know where everybody 
right here was Sessak's house, over here was Victor, where these trees up back over here were Merle. Uh, uh, when I was visiting recently, uh, uh, we, we uh, hired a, 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 a kid, an artist to uh, do portraits of me and Merle. This is, I don't know, can, oh, you can't see these. I'll show them to you later. I've got a little portrait of Merle here. But at any rate, uh, and then our house is over there and Herbie and Harold here, and this is Albert Nogales' backyard. So uh, this is one, of, I, I love looking out windows uh, and paint. When I'm in hotels, I'll draw and I'll paint. And, and it's just a, a long time uh, 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 habit with me. And I, and I paint on this balcony all the time. Is the next uh, video, the next, is there another one? There it is. Yeah, that's another example. That's that's looking out um, my window uh, in my studio in, in Yonkers. Uh, uh, as, as an artist, you can take uh, liberties, you might say. The, the houses are what I see from my window. The trees I added uh, just for uh, depth and for uh, uh, give it a little more uh, of, uh, interest. And uh, I'm, I'll do that all the time. I don't have any problems. I'm not I'm not the kind of artist that is, uh, is, is trying to uh, 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 paint or, or, or uh, things that are as they are. I mean, I, I did that as a photographer. So as an artist, I take a lot of liberties and, and, uh, and uh, uh, use my imagination a lot of the time to uh, enhance what I think is enhancing the image. Uh, I think the next one, that is a very large uh, example of uh, <clears throat> what it looks like in the woods, just off, off, uh, off the balcony here. You can see the woods from here. Uh, I've been going into those woods for 30 years. I take my easel in there, uh, uh, not, not as much recently, but for many years I was out there. So I'm, and, when, and I would paint it as I saw it or as, as, as best I could. And then I'd go to the studio and do variations. And this is one of those, uh, there goes the train. It's on the way to Chicago. It's Amtrak <laughs> passes by here. At any rate, uh, so this is, this is one of many paintings. I've done literally hundreds of paintings uh, of the view. Uh, the blue band in, in the, uh, across the top center uh, represents the Palisades in the distance. And then uh, there's a sliver of white that represents the river. And in the in the late evenings, that's the, the river does because it's bright, bright white from the sun shining off of it. And then again, I added uh, uh, stones because uh, I like doing stones. I, I spent a lot of time in Ireland painting rock walls. And then uh, and then I, uh, the yellow is uh, this. Uh, it doesn't necessarily exist as you see it there, but I, I just like the idea of, uh, of uh, the light and, and the, you know, creating a, a, a representation of what it's like in the woods there. And I've done so many different, I, I really believe in variations. I like, I like taking a subject and then doing it over and over again as many times as I can. So that's, that's that. Um, Lee, thank you so much for this introduction. I just wanted to mention that all three of those paintings are on view at the Hudson River in Lee's exhibit from the desert to the river. And we are open. We're open this afternoon. If you want to take a little jaunt down to the Hudson River Museum, uh, we're open Thursday through Sundays and you can see these works in person. Um, I can't believe, Lee, that you had that train come like right on cue that was perfect and that leads us um to... i used to tell connor that that was his yeah. personal train set <laughs> well, it was a great of... expense to get it for him I, I i bet you're quite the quite the uh the train magnate but anyway that train will make an appearance i believe in yeah. what we are about to see next which is a film actually um produced by Lee's son Connor uh, of his actually painting down at the Hudson River Museum, right in in Riverdale, and yeah. uh, you can see it's like just about a half a mile. Uh, right, half very. A mile. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are at such a beautiful location, and uh, we'll get to join him on plein air right now. So, Olivia, if you could cue up the video, we'll take a look. Thank you.
Let's just let that resonate for a moment. What a magical, magical view into okay. the artistic <laughs> process. Wow, Lee. Um, and what a talented family. So, so, oh, there it is again. So, so let's take <laughs> that's, that that's half going mile to, that's walk. Going to Boston. It's going to Boston. Right, well, <laughs> so now we're going to join Lee um, yes. from his balcony overlooking the Hudson um, to get involved in the process ourselves. Lee, yeah. take it yes. away. Yes. Very excited. Okay. Um, I I'm going to offer up a, a couple of exercises, but uh, first I want to just, just talk about, this is the painting that, uh, that was in the video. Let's see. Can you see it all right? I guess so. Uh, and uh, yeah. I'm, I continue to work on it. And I do that because I can. Uh, Aaron said, well, why don't you leave it alone? I said, well, I don't, if I see something that bothers me, I go in and then, you, and that's, that's the process of painting it happens all the time. I think every artist can tell you the same story where they should have left something alone, but, the, uh, but uh, uh, you go back into it and then it becomes something else. And then, and, then and that's what's happening here. Uh, right now, it's it's in a in a terrible state, but I don't mind because that it's really the process. So is that's what fun. People always ask, when is a painting finished? I say, when someone when someone buys it, that's when it's finished. <laughs> and when when uh, when I was out there painting, you saw people uh, walking by and strolling by in the woods. Uh, not one person offered to buy the painting. Not one. So uh, now I have it and uh, I'm gonna continue working on it. But uh, uh, I'm, I'll be making even more changes. And, and, and it's just, it, the whole idea is just to have fun. I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. And I'm gonna attempt a little later, I'm gonna attempt to do a variation on that painting on, uh, on uh, this piece of cardboard or, or this, this uh, wood, wood panel. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll go through the motions of how, 
how you uh, uh, design and, 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 and there'll be something here, but I'm not sure where it will be. Now the cardboard I have because it's less intimidating and it's uh, less expensive. Uh, these boards are, uh, they're intimidating because they're, they're so nice, you know. But I want to also point out that I always take the sides so that when you're finished with the painting, you take the tape off and you have a nice edge. So you don't have to invest in frames. Can you see that all right? So I just take this blue tape, put it around, and then, and then this is a variation on that same idea. Uh, the, they're weird colors or, you know, strange colors. I, uh, and, and I had a teacher who always said that, uh, don't, don't pay attention to uh, blue skies and green trees and whatever. He says, do whatever color you want. It's, you know, it, 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 skies can be red, they can be yellow. They can, uh, this band of the Palisades changes, uh, uh, the light changes every day and the seasons during the, uh, the autumn, that's just a rainbow of colors out there. When it snows, it's a whole different character. And, uh, and uh, I, I want I want to uh, offer an exercise uh, that I, I do all the time. Um, I, I had a teacher in, in San Francisco at the uh, Arts Art uh, Academy when I first started out, and um, and then fortunately I had a, a, an even better teacher, uh, Elaine Badgley Arnaud. She wrote a book, The Edge of Vision. She's had major shows in Paris and New York and San Francisco. She's remarkable. She's just turning 30, 95. <laughs> she's just turning 95 and she's spry and energetic as ever. She's still working, still laughing and still teaching. And she's always present. She's always looking over my shoulder when I'm working. She and the artist I mentioned earlier, they, they really um, made a big point of um, uh, trusting what's inside, not necessarily uh, uh, what's up here. Uh, trusting your instincts. Uh, Elaine always suggested go back to your childhood when you were free and you weren't worried about what people think. And that's been a philosophy I've tried to maintain. Uh, but the other aspect with the, the earlier artists in uh, art school, he always uh, uh, recommended doing variations on any subject, no matter what you do. If you have a little still life you're working on, a, a bowl of flowers, and then you paint it, and then it's finished, and you hang it on the wall. He always suggested, don't just be, don't settle for that one painting. Do another one and another one, and they'll all be different, and, and you'll learn from each one. And that's a, a little exercise I'd like to uh, offer uh, if you have uh, pad and paper and stuff like that. Um, well, one, one is one is first. Uh, let me get. Sorry. I just want to show you too. These are wood panels I like to work with sometimes, and I like the square format. It reminds me of my Roloflex and you know, Hasselblad. But at any rate, uh, you see, I've taped this on the sides so that this wood will, will have a nice uh, uh, finished touch to it when the painting's done. But this is another, I'll sometimes paint, uh, tape the edges, just the width of the tape, so that when I take the tape off, you have this nice wooden border of uh, uh, networks for me. But uh, in terms, I have two exercises. One is, uh, let's see, you can take a pencil, I have one here somewhere. Yeah, here. You take a pencil or, or, or a crayon. Let's, uh, let's do this. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter, crayon, uh, pencil. And that's all I want you to do. That's it. Two lines. Two lines. And not necessarily now, but later. Take uh, at least nine sheets of paper and make those same lines over and over. Um, where's that little one? Here it is. Oh, I, I really uh, recommend it. Here's, here it is again, two lines. And uh, basically what you've got here in, in, uh, is uh, three uh, shapes, three shapes. And then, the, the, then the, the fun part is, this represents the Palisades. It's right out there, it's right in front of me. Uh, but it could be out your window, something else uh, that you can do the same thing with. 
this is a sky, this is land, and this is water. And then you can just, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just, I won't try to, well, maybe, maybe I gotta brush this some more. I just have this ready. All right. Let's see if this comes off easy. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna have to clean <laughs> where that thing go. Oh, here we go. I'm just gonna splash this on top. Okay. And I might leave a little thing there. Kind of looks like a rocket ship. Uh, uh, different color for the bit. And this this also if you think about um if you think about uh, I can't think of his name right now. Okay, uh, there you have uh, I think you were thinking of Mark Rothko, right? Mark Roth, thank you. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's just take another color. Now the idea of doing this nine times as I suggested, and I picked nine for a reason. Uh, this is a different color mixed with that purple. Okay. Now, there you have what is basically a sketch of what we're talking about. There's the palisades, there's water. You can, you can go, uh, and then you keep doing this over and over again, each time with different colors. Then you can add little things like a boat, you know, things, or maybe an airplane, something like that. Uh, but the point is, you do nine of these. And do different, make it red, yellow, and green, or orange, pink, and, and blue, different colors. And then you're going to have a collection, nine, nine squares with colors on them. Then you can take those nine and start moving them around, and you create a larger piece with, with uh, pieces that resemble uh, 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 clay. Look at this. These are all just shapes. Can you see that? This is uh, Sean Scully. He's an Irish artist, I believe. And and he he you see this is like a here's here just nine squares, but then he adds this element. And you can do that with these. You see what I'm saying? Uh, here, look at this. Bang, 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 bang. It's just a wonderful um, exercise. And then you can really branch out and try other things. Look at when you think of this, this is a square with just a color here and just put on. This is another one with three ideas and another one or another one. And this is something you can do over and over and over again and have so much fun with it. And uh, different colors, different shapes. And every time you do one, if it's on the same day or if it's on the next day, if you do it the next day, they're all going to be different because you're going to be a different in a different mood. You're going to be in a different space. You're going to be involved, maybe in in uh, in uh, worried about uh, 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 getting to the dentist. Or so your the expression you make as an artist is also a reflection of how you're feeling. Just as it is when you get dressed in the morning, you uh, you, you dress a certain way depending on where you're going and and, uh, and what your what your uh, what your feelings are, what's going on in your life. And this is a daily uh, uh, form of uh, creativity, is just getting dressed in the morning and, or choosing uh, the right color uh, shirt or tie if you're inclined. Uh, 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 let me think, that's one exercise. And then there's one more, and then I'll get back to painting. Uh, there's one more. Uh, this, is, this is something, let me see. Let me see if you can see that. Now, I'm going to ask you, uh, I'll show it for a little while, but this is really uh, uh, things you can find wherever you walk around and you look for patterns and things. Then you can uh, uh, take them off your iPhone and draw them. Now, this is, I love these patterns because if you look, it's, these are uh, the uh, uh, a window uh, and a different glass and this has a wire mesh in it down here, so it's a different color. But look at the design of it. It's not unlike the idea that we were doing with the others. 
but the shadow from outside is of the trees. And it's really that just in perfect harmony. Uh, and and uh, look at the X here. Each square has its own design. Look, bang, bang, three shapes, a thick shape, not unlike Sean Scully's work, uh, uh, but everything is just in the right place here. And then just simple suggestion. Now you can find this on my Instagram if you want a, a copy. And I would suggest the same thing. You make, you make the marks and then each, you can just do different colors. Treat it like a stained glass window. And you'd be surprised how uh, many different variations you can come up with something like this. Uh, again, it's on Instagram, not too far down in the, in the blog. Uh, and I just would love to see uh, uh, people, uh, the, the infinite possibilities of colors uh, and how they relate to one another and the shapes and so on. So that's another possibility for uh, the future. Then um, I wanna go over what I think is very important for me anyway. And that's uh, sketching. I love to draw. I think it's very important. I think it's the most important thing an artist can do is, is to draw. Um, it just, uh, it's, a, it's a foundation towards uh, better painting, really, for me. And uh, I think a lot of artists feel the same way. And you can draw anywhere. Like I said, I've been drawing those palisades. I, I, I do the trees like M's, blah, 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 M, 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 M. And then it creates a pattern. And uh, that train's going to Tallahassee. It's going in the wrong direction. So at any rate, uh, but you can go anywhere. I love going to museums and drawing off of paintings. This is the Hudson River view by Daniel uh, Butnam. Uh, and then there's a last name. I can't read it. Shame on me. Bring I think it's Brindley. Brindley. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And this is a sketch. Or you just go to the museum and you and you sit down and you can sketch, and you learn so much uh, from sketching uh, other artists' work. This is actually a sketch of a painting, not not uh, so so. And it's so much fun, you know. Just look at the pillars of smoke, and and, and there's the Palisades again back there. This is Yonkers. Uh, it's the, some kind of factory, steam factory, I think it says. Uh, here's another one. Uh, this is um, Storm Over the Hudson. This is also there back there. I don't know if I'm showing this right. Back there is the Palisades and uh, some old buildings. Look at this very Irish looking. Really. And look at these uh, wonderful shapes, you know, uh, the lamps and everything. And there's so much to learn. There's figures walking by. There's a, a lady with an umbrella there and so on. And uh, I just love, uh, and this is by Ennis, George Ennis. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I do a lot of that. The other, one other thing is, uh, whenever, uh, <clears throat> whenever I'm traveling, I like to sketch. I'm always sketching. Uh, it's very important to me. This, I had a, an assignment in, uh, 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 in uh, South Dakota. This is, um, Crazy Horse Mountain under construction. And eventually he's gonna be riding on a horse. It's, it's a huge, huge uh, thing. His arms stretched out. You have to look this up. This gives you an idea of scale the head, the, on top. Uh, am I showing it? No. Uh, but the point is, and then you, again, variations, you know, you take a subject and you approach it from all different angles. Uh, this is a silhouette of it, the head, and then his arm will be stretched out pointing over the Black Hills, and uh, it's gonna go on forever. Someone's trying to call me, I'm gonna decline it. You still there? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, oh, this is, this is it again. Anyway, uh, now this, this is a, sometimes uh, I forget a sketchbook, but I'd be reading the book and I'll sketch in the book. You can 
draw anything, your, your meal. I always like to draw my meal when I can. And uh, friends that I have, uh, that's Misha Erwitz's dog on his cell phone. Uh, that's John G. Morris, the picture editor from the New York Times. But this is a picture taken of me by Randy Kennedy. He's uh, worked in the culture department, a reporter. He wrote about art. And we went to Venice to the Biennale together. And he took this picture of me that I love drawing in this book. This is the art spirit. It's the Bible for all art students and really for artists. Uh, it's just a wonderful, you can read it over and over. I have several copies, so I didn't mind drawing in it. Uh, but, uh, but what I love about it is, this is a photo of me in the plaza drawing in this book. And there's the subject I'm drawing. And here's the drawing that I was drawing in that photograph. So I always thought that was interesting. But uh, no matter where I go, uh, this, is, this is a Picasso, Pregnant Woman by, Pop, by Picasso in, at, uh, at MoMA. So wherever you go, you can always be drawing. I think that's an important thing. Um, Oh, this, uh, this sketch is, this is Fidel Castro. Uh, these are people waiting for him, uh, soldiers there in the, in the plaza waiting for his May Day speech, which went on for hours. There's Che Guevara back there. These are all from Cuba. You know, just, it was, uh, uh, sometimes I, I, I get in trouble because uh, I'm supposed to be taking pictures, <laughs> but I'd be sketching. Uh, but uh, I, I, in, in a lot of ways, I like the sketches more than the, uh, than the, uh, than the photographs. But uh, don't tell my ex-boss. Uh, okay, and then again, from windows. Wherever you go, you can look at windows. And these always provide uh, interesting shapes and ideas for future paintings. Now, this, is, this actually I painted there out the window. I had some paint along. And then I came back and I did a whole series of these. Steve Burrell has three of them. It's a triptych. It became a triptych. Uh, I think this is one of his. So, but you see the idea, here's, this is the idea about drawings and sketching is that uh, you make your sketches when, wherever you are. Uh, these are two different sketches. And then you, do, you go to the studio and you, and you, and you work from the sketches. Uh, I want to suggest um, a video that Connor made. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's called uh, Librado Romero Barcelona. And it's a, it's a video. The reason I'm, I'm suggesting it is uh, you can see a painting from start to finish. And it's based, you'll, you'll see me holding a, a sketch like these. And, uh, and then I'm doing the painting and you can see the painting from start to end uh, in, a, in like 30, uh, like uh, 10, 10 minutes or so. You see the start to end. And then at the end of the video, he, he photographed, uh, filmed uh, variations on that very same. And you can see all the different ways to paint any given subject. And these were all based on the sketches and then the variations, variations. So, uh, I don't know, are there, are there any questions? Uh, is this a good time for that? Do you want me to we'll try to do something with this? Um, yeah, go ahead. We, we don't have any questions as yet, Lee, okay. but um, please, everybody, feel free to, to type them in the chat. Do you prefer that we ask the questions during uh, during the process, Lee, or do you want to oh, wait? Oh, I don't care. Yeah. Okay. I don't care. All right, we'll take I'm a look. Gonna let you know. anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna give a little uh, demonstration. Um, that's just the wood. You, you, you saw in the video that I, I covered the entire. Um, um, the entire canvas with uh, different colors, and uh, it doesn't matter to me what the colors are, as long as they're light and pastel. Uh, it's 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 to, I, I I would I can't even imagine working on white, so I so I, I get a middle tone and it, it doesn't matter the color. Those 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 colors are going to come through the painting eventually. Uh, you can still see some of them uh, highlights under 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 underneath. It's not so evident on this one because I painted over most of it. Uh, 
But a lot of paintings, you can see that glow come from down uh, uh, beneath. Uh, I'm looking for some paint here. Uh, so much for Okay, let's, oh, here. I always like pink uh, as a background. Ross, Ross Sienna is probably better than most, because then that gives you that kind of Renaissance look, you know, like a drawing that Rembrandt, they always look like they're on brown paper or something. But uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of. Uh, of uh, uh, I'm going to do this very quickly and very simply, just to just to give you an idea of how you I work towards uh, variations again. In fact, let's, let's make that a tree there. <laughs> now, some would say, why don't you just leave this alone? I mean, it's a nice abstraction. And believe me, there's many times where I should have done that. Um, but uh, nevertheless, let's go. It's going to come down. That's, that's the problem right there. Okay, now here's the fun part. Uh, I think we're going to take uh, just for out of simplicity. It's 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 not really um, uh, this color, but that doesn't. Again, like that that early. Uh, and it's, it should it should be a straight line. Oh, maybe I can correct it, but that's the palisades. That's the palisades, supposedly. Okay. Oh, I, I ruined the tree. I should have just left this. Okay, so here's the palisades, supposedly. Let's try it a little thicker. Trying to get that line. Some people are better at lines than I am. Okay, now um, I'm going to take some white and uh, let me get around here. And create some semblance of water. I mean, an, the idea of water. Okay. Now we're going to do the sky lighter. Again, this is just an exercise. It's not, you know, it, 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 it's not, uh, I'm not out there looking at it. Okay, so you, you kind of start seeing what we're talking about. If I could just get this lines figured out. I don't have a steady hand anymore. <laughs> okay, that's pretty close to what, you know. Now, just for fun of it, we'll throw in some white clouds. <laughs> Starting to sound like that guy, what's his name? Ross, <laughs> Bob Ross. I put on some friendly little clouds. He was a genius, I loved him. I, I watched him all the time, all the time. I have a Bob Ross chia pet in my studio. Someone gave it to me. Okay, so that's just, you know, again, it's just suggestions. It's not trying to be, you know. Now the real fun, and again, <clears throat> the real fun, and I'm gonna take colors at random. This is uh, a green, and I'm just gonna come down and, and, and create a tree there. It's a little, that one's a little fatter. It has a, okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, again, I'm picking odd colors. Uh, green and orange are complementary colors, so it might create some kind of energy or something. And, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to figure out, uh, trying to figure out uh, their relationship to one another, the shapes and the lines. Uh, let's just do some of the, oh, 
I don't have to worry about the rug. I had plastic down, but I spilled paint on it already. So it looks like the rug will be, if you want a rug with some paint on it, it'll be outside in about 45 minutes. Now you can see that uh, this isn't going very well, but that's, it's, it's, it's not a big deal if it's going well or not. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking for. Uh, okay, let's let's do this. Now that's a nice that's a nice addition. Okay, now I'm gonna take this. Learn a traditional brush. Take too much time. As a winter look to it. And, uh, I know I got a dark blue for somewhere. Oh, oh. I can't find it. I have to do. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just, uh, paint. Let me get over here. These are supposed to be rocks. And again, I'm really, if you think about it, I'm really painting like I did when I was a kid, you know, because you don't worry about things when you're a kid. You just, you just make marks and you have fun. And uh, so that's, I, I, I really recommend uh, uh, trying to go back to your childhood when you're working and uh, that whole sense of freedom. Uh, let's make, uh, this one's kind of thick. Give it a, these are big leaves, supposedly. Yo! A little excitement never hurts. <laughs> That happens all the time. It happened in the video, if you notice. Um, I wish I had a certain color, but I can't find. Okay, I am going to, uh, what color is, oh, that's the wrong one. I picked up the wrong one. This is supposedly a fatter tree. I don't know if this is starting to look like anything or not, but there's another fat, fat tree. Will continue on this vein. Uh, you start seeing this a, a, a semblance of, uh, of, uh, of a painting, perhaps. This is my go to color. Now, even this with all the looseness and so on, I can take this to the studio and work on it in various ways and, uh, and, and perhaps salvage it. Uh, at this point, it's kind of just a mess, but, but it is what it is. 
And I guess you get the sense, the sense perhaps of, uh, of what I was trying to suggest. It's not a good example of anything, but but you can see it starting to take shape, I guess. So, like, Lee, I have a question. I have a question, actually, yeah. um, since you invited questions while you're working. Um, when you paint in acrylic, do you always apply the paint straight from the tube? Because it's the process. No, no, I don't. I, I'm doing it now because it takes take forever to try to work with the brush and clean it and so on. I do a lot of this because, uh, basically, because I'm a very lazy person. I, but, I, uh, but the thing is, um, and I don't have a, I don't, you can see, I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> but, uh, but, you, but, you, but you kind of see the form taking place, you know. Uh, and like I said, it's really about trying to have fun and not worrying so much about, uh, about the final thing. The, fi the final thing, will, it'll be it, what it is when, when, the, when the time comes. And sometimes you get lucky and things just happen. A painting just uh, it comes out of nowhere, and you and you uh, 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 are so thrilled that that. Uh, but most of the time, I would say ninety percent of the time, if not more, like ninety-five, it's a struggle. It's always difficult to. Uh, uh, I I do not try. I don't really have plans. Like this is a rare occasion where I said, "All right, let me try to do uh, a, a variation on this." You say. Mm -hmm. Now this this is going to have a lot of. I'm going to um, maybe I could do it now. I don't know. No, I, I don't want to. Thank you, Lee. It's it's but, just so exciting to see it emerge. But but you can wow. you, get, you, get, you can see it forming, coming coming to life, and it's just a matter of now. Um, um, sometimes if I'm not happy with what what's going on. Uh, we have a large sink up there in, at the uh, Yoho Studios, and I'll take it in there and I'll just wash it down, and then and then part of the paint sticks, and part of it doesn't, and it becomes a really nice uh, uh, variation, uh, 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 abstraction of what I was trying to paint in the first place, and uh, it takes on a whole different quality. It's always about uh, exploring, have uh, adventure. You know, it's an adventure. Uh, you never know what the results are going to be, uh, unless you're. Uh, 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 some pe some people know what they're going to do and they do it and they know how, uh, but I'm not among the, that group, uh, and uh, I have nothing but admiration for those who do that. A lot of people plan their paintings very meticulously, and uh, but I'm uh, just the opposite. And uh, but uh, I mean, it's a nice sketch. It's not. It's nothing to write home about. But uh, but in a lot of ways, I, I I find it more energetic than this. This thing is. Let me get this off. Put this better. Now, from that experience, I can go here and and you know take take that out, take certain things. But I like that. I don't like that line. You know. See now now I'm just uh, going back in. And the light and up in the trees, you see that sort of type, do you see anything happening? The light in the trees is always, uh, it's always just peeking out somehow, you know? So you can really, again, like the stained glass idea of the exercise that I suggested, uh, these, these become lines and, 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 the, and then it becomes like an exercise back there. Now, uh, for what it's worth, uh, I like this better than, than, than I did a few minutes ago. So Lee, while, you, while you're in there, uh, yeah. Christina is asking, she's asking, how are the leaves done? How do you do the leaves? I don't do leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Again, it's a matter of personality. I don't have the patience. I just don't have, I think it has a lot to do with I never had the time because I was always trying to find time to paint between assignments when I was working. You know, I, I, would, I might get 15, 20 minutes while I'm passing by the studio, drop in and try to do something. Uh, uh, if you wanna know how to do leaves, you go to the Hudson River Museum 
and there's a whole bunch of Hudson River uh, artists, the Hudson River School, and you look at those trees and those leaves, and each leaf is done individually. Every leaf, every color, autumn, I mean, it's unbelievably beautiful. And that's where you can find and learn. And that's where you really do learn. You learn, you learn uh, by, uh, by looking at other artists. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna grab a, a, a book here. Um, two, two books. This, this is, uh, everyone knows uh, Paul Clay and, and uh, nobody uh, explored ideas. Look at that's a, but look at how I just put all these shapes and colors and ideas. Look at his, am, am I showing this? His drawings, uh, variations of colors next to one another. Look at that. And this, look at look at this little drawing here. That's this is where you you, you get your inspiration. Uh, this is along the lines of uh, Mr. Scully, the Irish artist that we were looking at earlier. You know, they all they all uh, learn. We all learn from one another, and there's always similarities uh, uh, between artists. Uh, uh, one of my favorites, and, uh, uh, and and I think a lot of people <laughs> is Bernard. Uh, I mean, no one is better at putting patterns together and shapes and windows. There, and there's a painting within the painting. There's another painting out here in the window. Look at there's someone over here, and uh, just these little suggestions of things. Uh, the colors, magnificent. Am I still showing? The colors are fantastic. And then there's the sketch. You know, that, that's what I keep saying. You, you gotta draw. If you're not drawing, uh, look at that. The white frames all these shapes. This is a painting in itself, but, it, but it's, it's, it's within uh, a more, in, in, uh, uh, God, it, it, it can go on and on incredible portraits. And the other place uh, to, uh, that's quite wonderful, I mean, museums, I think are the best things to visit and learn from. But Instagram has incredible artists. Uh, we have here, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it down to show it to you. I look at it every day when I'm out here. This is uh, Kevin Scorgi up in Boston and Maine, and uh, I, I look at his work every day. The guy is just, uh, uh, just painting all the time. He's a wonderful artist. We have several of his uh, that we, uh, we were fortunate to, to acquire. Uh, but I love, um, I have so many favorite artists on uh, Zenit, uh, I can't pronounce it, Zargetsa, Zenit, and uh, we have some of her work here. Uh, 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 Luke Hannum paintings, Luke Hannum. He's now ha gonna have a big show uh, in, in Cornwall over in British Isle somewhere. And uh, he's, he's, he's a master of our times. I mean, he is just unbelievable. He can draw a sketch and he does it every day. He does these giant paintings and that's what he's showing in this very prestigious gallery in Cornwall. Uh, I have one of his paintings here. He visited here year, uh, several years ago with his family, he came to the studio and I was thrilled. And uh, so we, we uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take a second. It's, it, oh, Mary's gonna get it, my assistant. <laughs> you should have seen the look on her face when I spilled paint all over the rug. <laughs> she was not happy. And, uh, at any rate, um, so I, I think it's important, especially on Instagram. Where, and, and the real nice thing too about Instagram is when you paint, you can study your painting when you come home, which I do. And then I go to the studio and I know exactly pretty much what I wanna do about it. And it's not necessarily, this is Luke Hannon, which I think is just incredible. So uh, I don't know what else to say or do, but uh, I'm sorry I stumbled along. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not, 
I'm not overly thrilled with this, but it's just it's just to give you the idea of uh, can you see both at once? Yeah, here. That this is this is the same idea as this, but it's again a variation. And if I do a third one on the cardboard, the cardboard will probably be the uh, the best one because you know there's always one is better than the other. And uh, uh, because the cardboard is not intimidating like this expensive material is, you know, I mean these these boards are very expensive, so. I'm always looking for wood. We have a lot of woodworkers and they throw a lot of wood out and I paint on that wood. And that's a real blessing. So uh, any questions, I guess? Lee, thank you so much. I mean, this watching, okay. watching merge from your, yeah, yeah, from your hands <laughs> and your consciousness has just been such a privilege. Um, I'm gonna check to see if we have any questions. Uh, Olivia and I are trolling the chat. Oh, we got Christina says this was great. Thank you so much. Um, and while we're waiting for questions, it was um, Alexa suggested um, maybe participants would like to share what they did. Um, if that's um, something, would you like to see what I would have done? Um, yeah. Okay, so. Um, Olivia, if you would uh, kindly enable uh, everybody's microphone and um, how should we do this? People can hold up what they did. Um, let us know if you would like to show Lee and everyone else your work as you've been following the process along with Lee. Yes. Um, I it also, if you would like to see multiple people's works at once, uh, you can go to gallery view if you are currently in speaker view and uh, that way you can kind of get a see a site on what oh wow. Wow. We have a lot of books. Look at this, Lee. Look I'm what you to, fire. I, I do I have to do something? You might have to scroll to the right um, so that you can see other people's videos. Oh yeah, okay, well. there's yeah. Alexa. Oh, by the way, we have at least 10 Alexa Grace uh, works of art in our home. And I have several in the studio. There's no better artist on the planet than that woman right there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Yeah, well, we'd I love actually... to see your work too, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so exciting. And Tracy... is that Robert? Is that Robert? Hey, uh, Robbie. Where's wow. your mask? It's a tongue. <laughs> Wow, so so thank you, Tracy. Isabella. Where's the work? Does she have some work here? No. <laughs> you just want to see everybody else's work, right? <laughs> so wonderful. Um for the other screen. Yeah. Any anybody else want to share? Oh, Kenneth. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I didn't know you were an artist. Wow, Jane, you it, it doesn't fit on the screen. I don't know why. Yeah, well, you, yeah, it's, it's the. Um, it. No, I can't get it to fit on the screen. The iPhone, I think. I think back up, back up. <laughs> I'm giving him hints. Mine is much less, much less. Um... Oh, wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's a little bit nutty. So that's mine. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Wow. Well, wow. uh, look at Christina's now. Let's see. I don't know. Everybody has a different order of people in the gallery, but wow. do I have to <laughs> do I have to scroll again? Wait. Olivia, does he have to scroll? <laughs> um, to see more, you might have to scroll um, multiple times across and okay. then scroll oh, back. Oh yeah, here, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, there. Wait, you have one <laughs> Bella. Oh, you well, you're too shy to speak. Oh, so, look at that. Can you, oh, oh, yeah. you this, please? That, you know, that's us. what. That's what, I was, that, that's what I was trying to do. Let's see. That's great. I think I uh, accidentally yeah. muted Tracy. Um, uh, Tracy, did you want to say something? I'll ask you to unmute. Um, oh, yeah. Let me see if I can feel the painting. Oh, oh wow. 
We can't see it. Tracy's again. Oh, oh look at that. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, hold great. Your ears up. Well, really great. Oh, oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. See what you've inspired, right. Lee? This is extraordinary. Oh, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, this here. is a this is a palm from a palm tree I found outside. Lee, can you hear oh, me? Oh, look at that. <laughs> yes, we can this hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, look at that. The I one? didn't have cardboard. So I went outside and found a palm from the yard that fell out of a palm tree. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Oh, that is great. No, I love it. Lee, thank you so much. And this is Leah's. Oh, Leah, how are you? <laughs> Mary, come and look at this. We have Chloe's. Lee, Chloe, Chloe. made a picture of you. Chloe made a picture of you and her on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait. And hold that I one can't up. wait for that to become a reality. <laughs> have that one. Hold that one up too, Leah. What? Hold that one up here. Yes, we have this one. Oh, yeah. We have many. <laughs> These are real artists. You should see that they have a large painting that they created when I was visiting. Wow. Uh, the brother Mar the the brother Marcus. Weekend? And it's an incredible painting. It's a What's giant it? painting. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna see if we can find that piece. But where is it? Yeah. So, anybody else have any comments, questions, anything to share? Okay. I just want to let you know. I put in the chat. So. Oh, there, there's an old. Uh, that's I did that in Ireland. That's that's in their home. Oh. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, lovely. So, so Lee, I, I really want to thank you so much. I mean, you brought this was so rich. You brought in so, so much background, so much inspirations. And to see, to really be led into your process was truly a privilege. And well, we just want well, to keep keep this up as much as we can. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and everybody there, uh, Sarah Linda. Oh, thank you. You know how much we love working with you and and with your um. And no, Olivia, you. thank you. Um, thank you, Lee. This thank is you, wonderful. Masha, and everybody. Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. so let me just mention in the chat. Um, I put in links to Lee's exhibit, Landscape Art and Virtual Travel, sponsored by Art Bridges. That's on view through August eighth. And um, I'm sorry, from the desert to the river, which is on view through June 27th and landscape art and virtual travel, which is on view through August 8th. And we have many more related programs to come. And you may also enjoy seeing the works of art created by students from pre-K through grade 12 as they contemplated their views of the outside world while they sheltered at home during the pandemic. And that's an online uh, community or a generated exhibit called Outside My Window that's on our website. Um, so please come see From the Desert to the River, Landscape Art and Virtual Travel. We'd love to see you and um, keep coming to our programs. And Lee, this was a truly special one. Thank you Thank so you. much to you, to Connor, to Mary. It was a, a family affair. So we really, really appreciate it. And thank you to all the museum family. Well, thank you and uh, have a great day, everybody. Enjoy. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you, Lee. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.